Hello, everybody, and welcome to Meet the Artist. Today, we're going to be speaking with Tom Peck. He is a member of Central Coast Sculptors, and he is a sculptor. And we will be getting to know him, um, learning about his passions and his inspirations and how he got started. And if he has any um, like shows coming up or exhibits that he wants to talk to you about. Um, really looking forward to it. I've spoken with him before and we had a really good time. So I'm really looking forward to everyone getting to meet him as well. Welcome, Mr. Tom Peck. How are you doing today? I'm doing just fine. How are you? I am great. Thanks so much for asking. Uh, so let's just get started. Uh, usually we start the, you know, interviews with like, give us a little bit of your history and your background. How did you get into uh, this? Um, well, this being art, um, uh, I was sort of, I have sort of, I was gifted with a, a, a talent in art. So, and that was sort of recognized early, like in elementary school. So art was, has always been my thing one way or another. Thank God, because I didn't have much else, you know, to be proud of. Um, and so I just, then I went to art center and I got my BFA there. And I just, it just sort of art education was, so art's been my thing all since day one. What did you start with? What did I start with? Yeah, what was like the medium you used when you first started? Um, I started I started drawing, doing a lot of charcoal drawing, and then um, I went into advertising um, because I had to make a living. Uh, so uh, when I got out of Art Center, so I was a creative director in New York and San Francisco and places, and and I, being in advertising at, at this real highly competitive level, you don't have any time. You work nights and weekends and all that. So I did photography because that was a medium that I, I, I could go in and out of quickly. Right. But you still use the same fundamentals of composition and all that. So I did that for, and I have a website, a photography website that does oh. that work, which is premeditatedshootings.com. Oh, hang on, um, I need to write that down. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Um, and I did that all while I was in advertising. Then when I finally escaped advertising, um, then I started painting and sculpture. Uh, and I, that was, I've been seriously pursuing sculpture for about, I guess about 15 years. And it was, uh, I remember earlier you asked me why, you know, why sculpture? What, what, what was the, what, what was the, the draw? Yeah. And I, I get, it's a good question because I'm not really sure I know it. I, I just knew I wanted to work. I had this intrinsic desire to work with clay. All right. So what in clay? So um, I, I, I took some classes to learn the fundamentals of, you know, working with clay and the kiln and all the tools and all that. I tried working on the wheel. And I, did, I quickly determined I didn't want to make pots. There's a, there's, okay. The world has lots of pots. They don't need mine. Um, I wanted to do sculpture, sort of, you know. So, um, so then which sculpture? So I went to the, I went to the Metropolitan Museum in New York to their bookstore. It's this fabulous, fabulous bookstore there. And I got every book I could find on sculpture. And I looked at everything, probably, uh, I don't know, like a hundred sculptors and maybe a thousand sculptures to see what, A, what has been done, because I don't want to do what's been done. Right. And, and also, what do I like and what do I not like? Fair so enough. I quickly determined that I don't like most everything. <laughs> so, uh, so that, Why? That Why? Was, well, I don't know. I just didn't feel it. Just wasn't me. It was too okay. realistic. It wasn't different enough. It was didn't have enough risk involved. Okay. In execution, all okay. that sort of stuff. So, um, 
then it narrowed down very quickly to like, oh, I like this sort of little area here. So that's what I was going to focus on. And then I remember, um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Rodin's sculpture, uh, Homage to Balzac. Yes, this is a story I want to hear. So I, I don't remember when I saw I guess it was maybe an art history or I don't know, whatever. But here, so Balzac was this national hero and they commissioned Rodin to do his portrait in sculpture. And so because Rodin was the preeminent sculptor at that time. So he began doing this thing and it was very realistic as they all those portraits were at that time. And he progressed along and it became a little bit more abstract, a little bit more simple. And he just pushed that execution of, um, of that of Balzac to, to a place where it was very abstract. And that was where he finished. And everybody was outraged. They, they refused to pay him. They wouldn't even accept it. It was put in a warehouse. But this sculpture is absolutely magnificent. It is so strong and so simple. And so what he did was he just captured the essence of Balzac, the feeling of Balzac. And that was like the, that just, for me, that was like, okay, that's what sculpture needs to be about. It's the simple reduction of what that, whatever it is you feel about something. Same thing with painting, abstract painting. It's, I, I did a, uh, a series on on um, Big Sur, and it was basically my feeling about how I feel about Big Sur, and the color and the shape and the dynamics and all that. So the whole sculpture thing was about simplicity and the sort of essence of stuff as opposed to a realistic portrayal of things. I love that. So when you begin a sculpture, uh, number one, where do you get your inspiration? Like what inspires you to do something? And then do you um, come at it with, uh, how do I want this to make me feel? Uh -huh. Versus how do I want it to look as much as like the feeling that it produces for you? Yeah, um, I guess. Well, the thing that appealed to me, um, well, I'll give you an example in terms of inspiration. So I guess the conceptual part of it was like that simplification thing with the, with the Rodin thing. Like, I, I remember I went to the, um, and I like really simple, strong shapes. For me, the essence of sculpture, at least for me, is, is um, this shape, just all about shape. So it, whether it's a human figure, then I just like to reduce that figure to a very strong, simple shape. But I've always, it's always appealed to me. It's it like Olmec and Mayan and Etruscan and all those have, have the sort oh, of yeah. primitive, very primitive, simple things. And for me, that primitive simplicity, there's an honesty and a strength about those simple shapes. You're not sort of, hiding anything with details <laughs> it's right. just it's really simple and it's just and and for me the trick is if it's a human figure for example how do you convey a humanity with next to no detail you know it's a little subtle if it's primitive there's not a lot of gesture and stuff going on sometimes i do figures that have no arms and no no legs or whatever but, but there's a flow yeah like it has a flow it has a movement, right? Uh -huh. Right. In yeah. the shape. Yeah. And, you know, these things are not, my work is not for everyone. It's, you know, it's just some people look and say, that's weird. I, <laughs> I don't get that. And then, okay, fine. Um, right. Uh, but I, I remember, for example, I went to the, again, this is the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and I was just, I used to go like once a year, and I'd always go there and kind of wander around and look at, everything and there's I found I came across a um, I think it was Mayan uh, an infant mummy so it's this little infant mummy about two feet long hmm. and um, it was so cool it was, the shape was so cool and had this little head and this little simple body 
and and that just I just thought that was so cool. So I just did a whole series of of figures of human figures, male and female, reduced to that simple simple shape. Wow. Um, so that was sort of an inspiration that came out of nowhere. And it just just there's just something I can't explain kind of academically why I, w I was attracted to it. It was just a feeling like that's cool. Right. Then that's what you're attracted to is the feeling that it gave you. Right. Yeah. And then you kind of study it and look at it and determine why did I feel that way when I'm looking at that thing and how do I replicate that feeling in a piece I do. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure it's that sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, because you're too simple. <laughs> I'm complicated. So <laughs> It's more like, oh, that's really cool. I like that. You know, then there we go. Go from there. Uh, and there's not, I mean, when you have things reduced to the extent that I do, there's not a lot of um, ways of expressing a lot of emotion it's got to kind of be an overall simple thing um because you because there's practically no gesture it's just very standard so um yeah the feeling i i'm not quite sure when from someone who's viewing it where they would get their feeling from it has to be come from from within within that right and i think right. that's the thing with with abstract work, whether it's painting or sculpture, um, when you don't provide any details, when someone's looking at your work and it's very abstract, then it's up to them to provide their feelings about it. If right. you have a realistic work, then it's about that specific thing because the details bring this Tell the story. Character. But if it's abstract, then it's open for interpretation. And so you're just kind of getting getting people started. They have to kind of bring their own have to bring their own life experience to it, and have the, how it makes them feel. And sometimes it makes them feel, you know, bored or whatever, you know. But you you never know, you know. That's right. part of the deal. Yeah. So I guess that um, that is an interesting thing about. Um, when you do abstract work, you have to you have to be totally happy with it yourself before you, you ever let it get out into the world. Because once it's out there, all bets are off. People bring whatever, you know, and sometimes it's devastating. You know, if <laughs> someone will look at a painting, and I, I think I mentioned this before, uh, they will see something in this painting or a sculpture that you never saw, had no idea was there. I didn't mean to put that there. Yeah, and I've had, for an example, I had a, a painting, and I think somebody, it, it was already framed and in a show. Somebody saw in this abstract shape a duck, and they said, oh, look, I see a duck in there. And I'm thinking, uh, what? And then, oh my God, there's a duck in this <laughs> one. So I brought the painting home and painted out the duck because once you see that duck, you can never unsee it. Right. So, yeah, that's the danger of the And then that's the only thing you see when you look Absolutely. at it too, right? Yeah. Like all the rest of the painting goes away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know. Uh, and uh, it's also funny that um, this, this is also true with painting and sculpture. People, as soon as someone says, and this happens all the time, oh, you know what? This reminds me of... As soon as they say that, brace yourself because some inadvertent, <laughs> devastating comment is about to come out. That they, it means, you know, they, it, that's just how they feel. But it's like, you think, oh my God, they saw that, that that's in there, you know, and it, it's just like, oh no. Um, but hey, you know, once it goes out there, that's all bets yeah. are off. And you kind of have to expect that too, you know, because yeah. people are so relatable, right? They they relate music to a feeling, they yeah. relate, you know, a sculpture, a painting, a whatever to a feeling. So yeah. um, whatever like connects in with that feeling, it reminds them of A, B, C, D, whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. and we just have no control of that. No. You know, we hope for the best. We hope that it reminds them of something beautiful and lovely. <laughs> You yeah. know, or maybe oh. we don't. Maybe that wasn't our intention at all. <laughs> I know. Um, I do my work. I could say it's like like I'm the only person on earth. So that by that I mean, you. I'm just painting for myself, basically. And if nobody else gets it or nobody else likes it, okay. Um, but it, unless I'm really happy with it and by my own criteria, and I'm really tough on myself. So it, it never leaves the studio until it's, I feel it's good in all aspects right. of good. Uh, it needs to be fresh and risky and academically sound and all that stuff. But if I get to the end, it's, it's, it's a torturous process. It's not easy. I mean, I, it just, I just redo stuff constantly and the, you, think you, you think you got it, and then it's like, oh man, I don't got it. And then you, you know, and you finally get there. But once I get there, and I'm happy, I'm good. I, then if it goes out and no one else likes it, okay, they're they're just missing out. <laughs> so right. you know, and and it's and uh, and if they buy it or don't buy it or like it or don't like it, okay, I'm I'm happy. I'll I'll put it in my I'll put it in my room. How long do you usually like spend on a piece on an average? It varies a lot. Um, with sculpture, sculpture is a different animal because it's very time specific. In other words, you once you get start working with clay, that clay starts drying immediately. So you have very tight windows and very tight time frame. So you got to just push through real quick, and you only have even though I spray it and keep it wet and extend my time as much as possible. Right. You really only have, I would say a week at the most, maybe four days of actual working time. Right. It starts to get so dry that you can't do anything about it. it. So that goes pretty quickly. Painting on the other hand, um, because I don't have a system, I don't have a, grid system or anything I just I have a an idea and then um that's what I call like a destination so I know it's like just take Big Sur for example I just have a sense of how Big Sur looks to me what color is it right you know the lines and all that stuff so I start marching toward that destination and sometimes it happens in a week or two and sometimes it takes months um, right. Then sometimes... And you work with oil on campus, is that oil correct? Oil campus, yeah. Yep. And then sometimes I think I'm finished. And then, you know, we. I remember one time we talked about this where the next day, the problem with the next day. Yeah, the problem with the next day when I think so, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, you work at the night, you get it to a point where you think, oh, this is cool. I, I'm happy. We're finally, I'm there. And then you go to bed, you'll wake up, you, next morning you peek into that, you open the door of the studio and you peek in, and it's like cringing time, like, oh. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, no, it's, I hate it. And, you know, it, but it works the other way too. Sometimes you think, God, this is just not working. And then the next day it's like, oh, okay, that's looking pretty good. Right. So, it, but it, it, it is a bit of a torturous, for me anyway, it's a torturous. Well, yeah, thing. and we, we also, had talked about like the idea of um, uh, making a sacrifice till the kiln gods, right? Like that you, uh, like here's uh, the deal, you know, it's like you do all of this work, you get it exactly where you want it and then you put it in. Yeah, kaboom. Yeah, yeah. That's probably more dramatic that next day. Opening, oh my God. The, kiln, opening the kiln door is, is very scary. Can you hear it if it happens? Like if you're, no. No, you don't. Because usually it happens in the middle of the night or early right. morning to the fires like all night. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, you just open that kiln door and you just look, eh, and then, you know, sometimes everything's good. Sometimes you just see, I just had one last month um, that it was a piece that one of the legs blew and like, a million pieces in the, ah. in the just a million pieces 
Yeah. All, the, all of it was fine, except one piece of one leg just exploded. And I think I know why, because I, I screwed that up. But, uh, but yeah, uh, every time I always make a little offering to the kiln gods when I put everything in there, like, okay, you know, be kind to me. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> It's very. That's got to be a torturous night. Do you sleep well that night when you put something in the kiln? Oh yeah. I, 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 now I just know there's nothing I can do. Right. If I've done everything I can think of, I mean, you know, I've been done. I've done it long enough now that I kind of know what to avoid, and I'm actually getting to be pretty good at that. But, um, but there's still unforeseen and different clays behave differently. Mm, right. Some are more brittle than others, and so forth. And um, yeah, so. It's, there's still, it, with painting, when you're finished, it's never going to change. It's done and you've got it. But unless it has a duck in it. Unless it, exactly. <laughs> if it has a duck in it, Yeah, but redone. you can fix that. That's fixable. <laughs> if something blows up, and you gain That's very true. That is a, a real benefit of the sculpting versus painting, right? Yeah. Is that in painting, yeah, you can fix Gosh, every anything really. Yeah. I mean, if you don't like it, you just paint over the whole thing, start over. Like it doesn't even matter. That's right. Yeah. But but sculpting's not not so much because then you have, if you want that piece, then you have to start all over. Yeah. So yeah, when I, the leg blew up, did you start all over? On I'm that sorry. Piece? Did you start all over on oh, the piece where no. the leg blew up? No, this just happened, and I. I, I don't You're know. You're still recovering. Yeah, I'm still recovering. Uh, <laughs> I can get it. You go, the thing is, with you, you've, you've put in at least a month of, you know, toil. Right. And then and overnight it's gone. So that's traumatic. But, um, but hey, that's part of the, that's part of the deal. Right. Do you figure that at that point, that piece just wasn't meant to come out into the world? That... No. <laughs> that the lesson was whatever the lesson was as you were working on it uh well i did try to do a forensic examination and say okay what happened here right and in this case i think um this was a, a a piece that i had done like three or four years ago and i hadn't glazed it i had fired it but i hadn't glazed it so i decided that i would uh, glaze it and so i put it back in and the thing is with this, these sculptures, you always have to bear in mind that there has to be a way for the air to escape. If the air is, if you have a seal trapped, you know, a leg or an arm or a head and it's trapped, it will expand and it will blow up. So there always has to be air escape holes. And I think with that leg, I, I it was early on and I wasn't smart enough yet to avoid that sort of thing. Um, and then I think I just, had that accidentally sealed off and it but i don't know i mean the fact that it had been fired once so why didn't it blow up the first time so right you know, see the kiln gods they're very finicky <laughs> very and very cool. particular and cruel uh and cruel especially if that's yeah when you put that kind of time into something yeah and yeah, yeah and to have it destroyed yeah that's yeah i know yeah, that's got to be pretty awful. Yeah. Pretty awful. So tell us about your website. Oh, um, my website, premeditatedart.com is... And the other one is premeditated... Premeditated shootings. Shooting. Okay, that's... I couldn't get that. Premeditated shooting. That's the photography. Premeditated art. That's a great uh, website, like, name premeditate because it could be so many things yeah you know well, well with the photography one i thought it was real clever you know to have premeditated shootings a couple of years later i discovered that some people tried to access it and they were blocked because the computer okay. said it was crime and murder and huh. premeditated shootings and i thought oh never thought of that right but it's but it's, it's they never it's not down or anything it's still there so it turned right. out to be okay um yeah so That's i just awesome. you know, it just had my recent work on both painting and sculpture on that on that website okay that's what i was going to ask was if you have your paintings on that site too 
-huh. I did go look at it. I didn't, and I'm like, did I see any paintings? I don't know. Did I, I don't remember if I looked at the paintings. I might not have. I might have just skipped over that and just went straight to the sculptures. Oh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. They're just two separate sections within the site. Yeah. yeah. So, what are you doing currently? Do you have any exhibits going on? Do oh, you have... yeah. Um, yeah, I, I work every day. Um, yeah, I go back and forth from sculpture to painting, and it's nice to be able to go back and forth because For sure. go from two dimensions to three dimensions, and um, it's a whole different skill set. So that's keeps each of them keeps them fresh. To For sure, yeah. Um, so right now, I have I just had that some pieces at the Moral Bay Art Center, which I've just recently like we just picked up when that ended. Um, I have two, I have three paintings. There's a new gallery in Cambria called Jordan Gallery, cool gallery. Um, and so I have three paintings, the four paintings there. Uh, I have two sculptures at the Museum of Art in San Luis Obispo. Um, and I have some paintings and sculpture at the 10 West Gallery in Santa Barbara. Very cool. So um, did you just go replace them, like change them out? Yeah. Yeah, I did. At Santa Barbara, I did. Um, that show ended and now, so I picked up a couple of paintings and then dropped off a couple of new ones. So yeah, there's a new new show there for you no know, uh, going into December. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. They're, they're all cool galleries. It's nice to, uh, what I miss around here is, are the pop-up shows that we used to have. We yeah. are working on it. I know, I know. We are I, working I, on I, it. I've been badgering Carl, like, come on, Carl. I, <laughs> that poor there, guy. You know what, there, I was um, lucky enough to go to the uh, board meeting ah. on Tuesday. Oh, okay. And, um, and so it was, I mean, it was really great just to meet everybody, but it was really nice to see uh, how hard they're working for yeah. everybody. Like they really yeah. are working hard for all of the artist groups. And um, and I think that it's just so great. And they're definitely out hunting for pop-up spaces, which I was like, yes, like he's, he, he, I think that he loved it. When I spoke with Carl, he was like, he talked a lot about the pop-ups and how beneficial they are for the artist members how yeah. like it's a great um you know way just to do things here so yeah, yeah. it's a it's a, just a no-brainer good thing there it, it's good it's really good for the artists because they have some place to show um they the, it's always juried so the the quality of the work is always very good right um mostly good and then the space in which the shows are staged they're empty spaces so they look better to a potential renter correct uh, when it's there um and it also good for like the collective and the the painters group and all the places that do it it's all it's good for them because uh, they they sponsor it and it's you know it's an absolute no-brainer good thing plus it's good for the the people you know right have, for the community as a whole yeah, yeah yeah they got an art scene and they were very well attended um they were very cool they were very cool yeah i look forward to um doing doing those i think that that i just love the idea of like this isn't a gallery that's not i mean it's not a permanent gallery right it's yeah. it's yeah. going to come up and it's going to go down and and it creates a sense of urgency right yeah. to the community yeah. like hey this isn't going to be here forever so you know come come see what you can see while you can see it yeah. and um yeah. you know so i love that like i love all the the whole thing about the pop-up yeah idea is Keeps super a, great because they changed well we had one really nice spot on higara street and that was i guess we were there like five years or something yeah that so that was like a super really long cool. pop-up but there were um uh and they would go a month you know they changed every month and then but there were some other venues before that and so you never knew where it was going to be but right that, as you said that keeps it fresh for the public because they say where's this what's happening and you know there's a urgency about it that is cool 
yeah, yeah. I think that that's really exciting. So how long have you been um, a member with Central Coast? Really? I don't really know. <laughs> I, I don't join much of anything, actually. Um, but, uh, well, gee, I guess at least five or six years or nice. seven. I, you know, I don't know. I think so. Um, and how has it um, benefited you being part of the sculptors group? Well, mainly to get to know other sculptors. They're, in which I'm very pleased that, um, you know, I guess I was skeptical in a sort of snobby kind of way that like, you know, oh, you know, I'm from New York and San Francisco and little Podunkville, Paso Robles, so they're not gonna, have, you know, so I came in with that attitude. Um, but then I find out there's all these really talented artists here. And so, that I guess for me was the main thing was getting to know these uh, other sculptors and there's really some really good talented sculptors in this group. Yeah. Um, and so that was that was really good. I was so pleased to find that. And then also, again with the pop up thing, what you do is there would you when you did the show you had to agree to do commit to like I think it was two four hour sessions of sitting at the gallery and. Okay. You know, yeah. And so you're with a uh, partnered with one of the other artists. So you get to sit there and spend quality time. And over four, six hours, you're talking about everything. You really get to know these other artists. So right. that was really cool. Uh, yeah, I love that idea too. Like, yeah. well, because it builds community, right? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Um, and, and we all need that, you yeah. know, and there, and there's some like-mindedness going on too when you're, uh -huh like just hanging out with another artist. So yeah, that makes it nice too. Yeah, everybody, for the most part, everybody was doing different work, different kinds of things. So that was cool. Right, uh, I noticed that too, that um, a lot of, yeah, everybody's style is different. Everybody's medium is different. Yeah. Um, I like that too. I, I love that idea that that it's, I don't know, because I think something of each style or each medium lends itself to something different that can be shared with other artists, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. And yeah, I love that. Yeah, a lot of young people who didn't know they liked art would come in and see it's like, oh, this is cool, you know? And so that was, you know, that was all good. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I look forward to it. So I, I'm happy to know that they're they're working diligently to try to make that happen for us. So that'll yeah. be nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I remember we were talking about before. Um, what would I, I say to these young potential artists? Yeah, and um, and some and then many of them who came into the, to the show would, you know, ask questions about it and where did they learn it. Um, it you know, it's tough. It's it just, in my opinion anyway, that um, in order to be, it's like, okay, I want to be an artist. It's like, okay, well, w what the hell does that mean? You know? <laughs> right. So it's like, okay, um, if you I, I think the example I, I always comes to mind is like a writer. If somebody says, um, I want to be a writer, they probably have little to no chance of being one. But if they say, I have an idea, I have, there's something I want to write, ah, then there's a good chance you might be a writer. And right. same thing is true with painting and sculpture. If you're an artist, if you just want to be an artist, I don't know. But if there's something you want to do, um, if right? You, if you have some sort of inspiration, even if it's a mummy at the Met, whatever, right? Um, uh, then, or Big Sur, right? Or like, Big Sur. you yeah, know, as I, I want to paint Big Sur. You have like, to. That's have something. Yeah. Right. Um, and also, unfortunately, I think you need to have some natural ability, some aptitude. Another, in order to progress and learn um, and get better. I mean, you can okay. practice and practice and, you know, you can get to be okay. 
Yeah, you can be skilled. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have that natural ability. Yeah. And then within that, you have a drive that you want to do it. Um, so it takes hard work. That's the unfortunate answer for a young person. It just but even if cool. you have been trained and have the natural yeah. ability, it's hard work, period. Still hard work. Yeah. Still hard work and a lot Still of it. hard work. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of young folks really don't want to hear that. It's not right. Really, it's well, not and then you had talked too about like that idea of, um, you know, so I go, I get trained, I'm doing all this stuff, but I have to make a living. Oh. And now oh. during oh, God. like making a living, like I don't get to spend as much time doing yeah. the art that I want. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's a killer. Um, uh, it, it, nobody, well, practically nobody can make a living doing art. I mean, it's really, really hard, even harder these days than it used to be. It seems right like. than it ever before. Yeah. yeah. So, um, if, if you have to make a living doing art, that's a tough road because then that therefore you have to make, do what sells. You have to make money because you're making a living. So you have to do what sells and what sells ain't necessarily going to be that good or what is about you. you right. Know, it's not going to be good for you. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. So you end up doing work that people want and, you know, so that's a tough road. Yeah. Uh, but if you can, um, I mean, for in my, for me, I, I don't have to make a living selling my art. Thank God, I would have starved to death long ago. <laughs> uh, so I get to not worry about whether it sells or not. And um, right. I actually, um, you know, it, it's nice when, like I said, my work is not for everyone. It's not pretty and it's not cute and it's, you know, it's not a lot of stuff that a lot of people like. Uh, so I'm always kind of, I'm always kind of amazed when somebody likes it <laughs> and really amazed when somebody buys it because here's this thing that's just from me. It's for me. And then here's someone's like, Oh, I like this. And then they buy it and then they take it home and it's, they live with it. And so right. that's really cool. Um, yeah. and I really appreciate and enjoy that, but I don't need them to buy it in order to feel good about the work. If it, if it goes, if I show it and it comes back and I still love it. It's fine. fine. Yep. Yep. Okay, so I don't, I can't remember if we talked about this before, but did we talk about storage? Oh, <laughs> yeah, you said that you, when once you finish a work, that you want to get rid of it. You don't it want needs to, to go. Uh, it's done. It doesn't belong to me anymore. It's, you know, and then I said, well, I'm the opposite of that. But right. When I do a work, I really like it. And sometimes I'm unhappy when it sells or, right. you know, and many things I've been, people have tried to buy and I won't sell them um, because I, I like having them around, you know. Um, but on the other hand, there are things that I quite like, but they're stored. And I would rather, to be honest, I'd rather sell them for, you know, $200 and have them in someone's house. Yeah. Than you know, but once you've been selling work for, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, then you kind of can't do that. And, you right. know, but, um, but yeah, I know that whole storage thing. What good does it do to have a bunch of stuff in storage? I mean, I'd yeah, really well, it. and I think that's the benefit of like the pop art, uh, pop-ups, the, um, collective, like, I feel like that's part of that. Cause we want our stuff out there now, whether it sells and comes back is a whole different deal, but right. We still want it out there. We want it to be being viewed. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, and I think that that you know that is a big benefit. Plus, it creates extra storage at the house. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, always, I've had this sort of latent idea of that all the artists in the group that they have they take they each select ten or fifteen pieces that they've had for a long time or whatever that are in storage. And you put them in a big show that's an auction. Oh. And, 
and people can just bid on them if they want to spend five dollars or five hundred dollars or whatever and if they care enough to spend if they like it number one and are willing to spend some money on it and take it home because they like it then what's better than that um, i think that's a great idea that might be a really good idea for um a co collective fundraiser yeah 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 you know would be to do a an auction like that yeah that's a good idea and then you know it's like i said it's just way better to have people if someone enjoying it in their home yeah. rather than having it sitting in your storage yeah because art isn't meant to be i don't know i have tons of paintings that are just stacked up yeah and when i first started painting i had a conversation with one of my friends who uh, actually inspired me to sculpt and i was like what in the heck am i supposed to do with all of these paintings like what am i supposed to do because they're just stacked up and yeah. he's like yep <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no 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 like <laughs> that's i only have so much wall space i only have so much storage like uh <laughs> the idea of them just sitting around yeah right um it's not pleasing no no yeah yeah i mean the act of doing them is what it's is what Correct. it's all about and so once it's done it's kind of done and uh yeah and yeah. i don't really like doing i, I the same painting twice if I, you know I, I, I'll, I'll once i've solved the problem and right. work it out, then that was, for me, that's what the satisfaction comes from. And then I just move on to a new problem. You know? Right. That's the, that's the learn in the yeah. process, right? Is, yeah. is that is like, okay, I, I solved that problem. Uh -huh. So, yeah, uh, that's a, <clears throat> I love that perspective though. I bet I don't, I, yeah, I don't like keeping my stuff around. I'd rather it be gone. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. And not that I don't have pieces that I love and that I use and are part of my decor, but really for the most part, um, I, I think that they don't belong to me. So yeah. 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 So that's yeah. really cool. Well, that's, a, I guess that's a good attitude that you don't fall in love with them and they, you know, you can just like, I don't know. See, I feel like I do. I feel like yeah. I do fall in love with them, like that process, right? The problem solving, like uh -huh. I do feel like I fall in love with them, but but when I'm done, I don't feel like they're mine. I feel like yeah. they were made for somebody else. So you have a loving relationship and then you dump them. Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could put it that way. <laughs> That's so cold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's frightening. Uh, <laughs> that is not true. As okay, we all right. Relationship, okay. but I'm, but but yeah, in that respect, because I feel like um, I feel like I'm a vessel. Yeah. Right. Is right. like I get inspired, it moves through me, it comes to here, and it needs to keep going. Yeah. Right. Right. And it yeah. needs to keep going. So. Um, and I, you know, and still when I think back on it or I look back at a picture of one that's sold and I'm like, mm, I still love it. Mm, yay. I still love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I do that too. I, I, I have once I think, God, I wish I hadn't sold that. <laughs> I have a couple of those. I really regret now selling. Really? Oh yeah. yeah. Because like I said, since I don't have a system and I, it's, right. it's not repetition, I will see works. I don't know, I'd like a year or two later, I'll see a painting I'll have hanging in my house. And I'll look at it and I, I see all these hundreds of decisions that were made all through the painting. And I think, and I think, God, how did I do that? I have no idea how I got to there and to there and to there, you know. Like, so there's a mystery about the whole thing, but it's sort of not reproducible because it was right. just alchemy. I mean, who knows how I got to where I got. Right. Uh, so, you know, there's a, uh, um, there's always this sort of magic quality about the whole thing. I was just yeah. going to use that very word. There is, there is magic that happens in the process. Yeah. And you can't duplicate that. Yeah. 
Right, yeah. you can't. And if you do, if you do try to do it, it just gets stilted and, you know, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah it, and it doesn't even feel the same. Yeah, I mean, it's easier to do, you know. Sure. I, that's what, one of the reasons I don't really do commissions. I mean, I've done a few, but because someone will see a work, sculpture or painting, they say, oh, I love that. I want one of those. Well, then you're reproducing that thing. and it's Right, just, good, buy that one. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. It's just like no, nah. but um, there's a there's a the, one of the paintings I'm talking about that I sold that I wished I hadn't was that I know I'll never. There were sort of accidents that happened and cool stuff that happened that is just not reproducible. So I know I probably won't ever do it again, and I really like it, but that's right. show business, yeah. That is, um, I am I'm thinking to myself about. Uh, play fired sculptures and you can't really like have happy accidents can you no well not very much i mean okay. there's, there's if, if you're working i'm just working on a piece right now that i i want to to be really really sort of rough okay. so and and so when you work sort of loosely and roughly things happen in the clay that you know you sort of don't plan, they're not intricate, they're like stuff happens. Right. And you can always get rid of it or leave it or leave some of it and you just do all that. So there is a little bit of that kind of accidental stuff, but no, for the most part, clay, if you're working, if you're doing um, figures, for example, it's about 50% engineering. Right. You have to get all the structure stuff right, the balance right. Because if you don't, like you know, you'll have a, a tragic accident. Um, but uh, then the other half is like uh, you know style and creativity. Right. But you, it all you have to. Clay has its. It's a partnership with clay. Right. Clay has its own mind. It dries when it dries. It's weak when it's weak, and it's it, you know. So you have to work with it. If you try to cheat it, or 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 get lazy, then you pay for it. So. It really is a funny little relationship that you have to understand how clay works and work with it. Otherwise, it'll turn on you. Oh, now we're, I feel like we're having like a love sex talk about like relationships. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it is right. Like every medium is like that too, yeah. in its own yeah. way, right? Is right. you do kind of have to become a master at the medium yeah yeah, right? yeah yeah at how it works when it works what's the best condition for it to work in like here are all the nuances and here's how i can make it work for me so if i know all these things about my medium yeah then when i want it to do what i want it to do yeah then then it can yeah and that all comes back to hard work repetition hours at it you know that's and then you know what there's no there's no shortcut yeah that's that's definitely and um, each clay each clay has its own personality and different traits and some clays are much stronger than others some are very fragile some are weak some are brittle and so you have to work within the parameters that each different kind of clay brings to the process and you know uh it just takes time to learn all that stuff yeah right yeah but, and just practice right and heads blowing up and that kind of yep, stuff make the mistakes learn from the mistakes right press on yeah. yeah that's something too for young artists or people wanting to you know who have an idea and are willing to do the work is is also having maybe some grace for yourself and just know that that mistakes are part of the process and if you can embrace the mistake and learn from it then your next piece will be better and oh, and it gets better yeah 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 and that's why it takes years right <laughs> to get to get there particularly yeah i guess if you say like well are there more po potential decisions to be made with clay or with painting i don't know um but just you know, I, I will go back and look at paintings that I've done and that are similar to what I'm working on just to see 
decisions that turned out to be successful. So I don't have to, to relearn that lesson. Relearn that lesson. And, you know, what if I make this green instead of red and blah, blah, blah. I can go back and say like, oh yeah, red was good. I don't have to mess around doing, go through the green process. So, right. you know, you can learn, keep leapfrogging along and learn from what you've already done. And that's, you know, that's, a that's probably a benefit here. too, of having some of your pieces around you. To... Everything's on my computer, though. I, have, I oh, okay. Have, when I put them, I have them up on my screen all the time to refer to them. And say like, oh. Do you still um, take photographs? No, very rarely. No, uh, because I just it, it, it's too much to have sculpture and painting and photography. I really love photography, and I took it very seriously for a long time. And so, but that's all kind of. Done. Well, it's what you could do at the time to still stay in your art. Uh, what? Say that again. It's what you could do at the time to oh, stay yeah, yeah, in yeah. your right. art. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. That was what I was able to do. And plus, I was out shooting commercials and I was all over the world. And so that was, I would, I took advantage of that. I would, uh, um, get to wherever I was going a couple of days early and I'd drive across country and I'm shooting, shooting, shooting. So I was able to, photography was the perfect medium right. for me at that time. Yeah. Have you used any of those pictures from that time as inspiration for any of your painting or sculptures? Only one. Oh. Only huh. one. And it was, which I worked out quite well, which was, I was, um, I, I wasn't, I wasn't shooting it, but I was. I was in uh, in Egypt. And I was on a boat, a felucca, on the Nile. I was going across the Nile, and there was a, a Nubian deckhand who was sitting on the boat, and he was. We were just midway across the river. He was resting, and so I took his photograph. It's on my website in the Egyptian part. And his gesture, he had his he had his head in his arm, and was sitting down, and it was so cool. So, and I had that for years and years and then, but I always just loved that photograph. And then, so finally I decided I'm gonna do, try to do a sculpture of that figure, oh, really okay. simplified and so, you know, in that gesture. But I did and it worked out great. So I, that nice. was the one time that I, I had a photograph that I translated into a sculpture. Oh, that's great. I love that. You, you see it on the website, you'll see the photograph and then you'll see the sculpture. Okay. Is the sculpture on the other website too? Nope. No. Oh, so it's only connected to the. Um... Yeah, it's it, it's in the photograph. Okay. Section and then it's it's a it's a sculpture in the sculpture section on the other website. Cool. Yeah, I get you have something. I should about. probably. I just recently did it, so I probably should put those two together, because it's cool to see them side by side. Yeah, yeah. Even on your sculpting um, website, they like. Here's the reference. Here's, yeah. yeah, yeah. It would be nice to to see that. Yeah, probably ought to have the mummy from the Met somewhere in there too. Probably so. <laughs> Whatever's yeah. still there. Yeah, I love that we get that it can be anything, and there's no like sometimes when you go out to look for inspiration, inspiration doesn't happen. It no. happens when probably you're never. enjoying life and doing things that you would just maybe normally do that go oh oh. And then an idea begins to grow. Yeah, I think the secret is to just, as part of your natural life, just you're exposed to a lot of different stuff. Yeah. And and then one will come along, and it's like, oh, if you're kind of paying attention and right. wait, looking for it in case it does show up, uh, then you can you can get it. Uh, <clears throat> but I don't think you can. I don't know how in the world you would go out to set out to look for an inspiration. You know, that'd be tough. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't think I've, number one, I don't think I've ever done it, but it seems like something you could do, but whether or not you were successful, that would be a whole different story. Yeah. Yeah. Either something moves you or it doesn't, you know, so right. God knows where it's going to come from. Right. Yeah. That's very cool. All right. Is there anything else that I think we actually talked longer this time than last time? Oh, really? <laughs> I do. Um, I don't. Um, 
No, I don't think so. Um, uh, I just hope that um, I, I just think the idea of doing interviews of both the different with the different sculptors is just a great idea that I think people are interested. Some people are interested in who these knowing who we are, are. And how they think and how they work. I think I mentioned to you before that it, I still think it's a cool idea down the road, maybe to be to go to a, uh, each individual artist's studio and interview them or have them talk about a show us around how they work with a particular work so you can see how each decision manifested itself in the actual work i think that'd be very cool get to see their space them and how they think i think that would be pretty cool i agree and and i that will that will definitely be happening because i think that even as i've gone through and and interviewed five or six of you like that's that's part of like my next level of curiosity is like ooh I want to be in their space I want to see how they you know do things I want to like feel what they're feeling and think what they're thinking while they're creating that that piece and and just um yeah so I that definitely probably will be happening in the future uh -huh. um so I'll put you on the list as that being a yes for you <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh no. Okay. <laughs> oh, exactly. See, now uh, that's the uh, whole other thing. <laughs> careful what you say. <laughs> You'd have plenty of time to okay. like clean All it right. up and organize it. Okay. Thank you, Tom Peck, for joining us today. And I look forward to viewing your website, both of them now. Yay. I'm super excited about that. And I'm excited to see what Central Coast Sculptors do next. Yes, I know. Yes, Thank well, you so much. That's my pleasure. Thank you. Appreciate it.